This episode of Ticket Volume is brought to you by us, Invigate. Get service operations under control in no time. Get one free month of our software solution by going to try.invigate.com. Ticket Volume is proud to present a leadership junkie and experience manager from Unisys who has a wealth of service and support experience from his tenure as a team lead, training coordinator, as well as many other roles at various companies as a contractor consultant. Welcome to Ticket Volume, news and information for improving IT experiences. I'm your host, Matt Barron, and each week I chat with different leaders to share insights on service management, technology, business, everything else that we can possibly cover, and this episode is no exception. Hello there, listeners. What are you looking to learn more about? Leave a comment, connect with us, share our podcast with someone. Now, let's begin. Welcome to Ticket Volume, Rocky McGuire. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me. My Excited pleasure. Yes. Thank you for taking some time to be on Ticket Volume. I do really greatly appreciate the time that you take to dedicate to this podcast and share what you've learned. Let's get right into it. How did you get started in IT, Rocky? I This is a fun story. So I, lo- I call myself what many in the industry will know as an accidental IT employee. <laughs> so my background wasn't IT at all. Um, I had various jobs as a, you know, my early adult phase. And I was actually transitioning from Chick-fil-A where I was in management there. And we'll talk a little about that later, I think. And then um, I, I was a youth pastor for about a year. And then I was looking for kind of a career move, right? I was interested in dating this this young lady and i wanted to marry her at some point i you know i was pretty confident and that meant i needed to be able to provide and have a job that was sustainable and i had a couple interviews they fell through put out something on facebook you know hey looking for a job at this point i was really just poking like i want something that i can i can cut my teeth in and grow and had a buddy who's a recruiter at an it company who, who you know does msp does it outsourcing and he reached out like hey you're interested in it it's like bro i don't i don't do computers like i it's not my strong suit and his response to me, I think it will always be something I remember because he asked me, do you fix your own computer problems? Do you use Google and fix your own problems? I said, yeah. He said, you'll be fine. <laughs> and so got my foot in the door at, at an IT company as a service desk agent, as a contractor. Uh, I, you know, within the first few months, I realized that it was a, you know, an industry that someone on my background had an opportunity to really serve people. Um, it's funny. In the, in the first three months, I, I had told my trainer, I, I want your job and I think I'm going to get your job someday. And I did. <laughs> um, and I had been, you know, looking at, okay, how do I grow here? And I had met with my operations manager, who was my boss's boss at the time, and said, what do I need to do? Right. What do I need to do to grow? And she was like, but nobody's ever asked me that before, you know, which is surprising to me because, you know, for me, it's like, it's, if you want to know, you got to ask. Oh, and boy. so from there, you know, it took me about, eight nine months i got i got converted to an fte at the the company i was with and supporting a um public sector so i was actually supporting a state government a couple state governments um and from there i became like level two admin so i was doing active directory word kind of troubleshooting access you know groups those kind of things moved to um a training or a team lead role for a disaster recovery site we're actually moving a very large operation from Orlando supporting a very large entertainment company uh, to where I live in Mason, Ohio. Um, and so I took on the team lead role for that team, did that for about a year. Uh, and then a opportunity arose where one of our members on our team, who was actually a trainer that I told I was going to take his job someday, went into a different role as service delivery manager for one of our new accounts. And so I got, you know, approach like, hey, you might be interested in this role. Let's talk about it and looked at it and, you know, kind of explored like what it looked like to train in this industry. And you know, I have a passion for just instilling in people, you know, skills and just knowledge. And so it's just a natural fit. And so I actually presented, did a, you know, a 10 minute presentation and um, ended up getting a trainer role, did that for, you know, a couple of years, multiple years. Uh, over training quality and you know i got to meet every person that came in this is pre-covid right so every face was coming into the door <laughs> and so i got to work with our, our vendor who's supplying contractors where i started and you know train our our environment train everybody who, who touched our industry and the company i was at at the service desk and so i did that for a long time and then i kind of transitioned to uh, a pseudo service delivery manager which i know it's not 
super, you know, internal IT organizations might not have that all the time. Um, where I was looking at some of our new acquisitions and saying, hey, how can we, you know, implement best practices and did that for a short period of time um, in the middle of COVID and, and kind of transitioning out of some projects I was doing during COVID, which we'll have to have a whole nother podcast for that conversation, <laughs> uh, which was a lot of fun. It was very rewarding, but it, and ended up you know, transitioning to a new company where I'm at now as an operations manager and, and moving currently into a, a new role of experience manager. Um, so that's kind of been my IT journey. You know, I didn't, didn't start in IT, just I have a desire to invest in people and it was such a good fit, just the industry as a whole. So, yeah. It's a lot of good nuggets in there. <laughs> I love the way that that recruiter talked about uh, support. You know, do you Google your own problems? That yeah. really is, that's the threshold yeah. for entry, basically, in the, in the help desk. And um, I really like the point that you made about career path, too. Like, yeah. if you don't know what the career path is, ask. If you don't right. have a career path for the people that you're leading, make sure you've got one in place because it right. it attracts better talent. It sends your talent on a better path. It, it's more efficient for your business, for your cost. It, it's better for your people. You know, the most successful organizations promote within. But, yeah. I mean, I wholeheartedly believe that. And you only do that if people are aware of their opportunity and how to get there. So Yeah, yeah. And you need that inspiration. You need to right. know that there's opportunity out there. I also really like the point you made about service delivery manager. Like, there are going to be roles that you find in an MSP or in a large enterprise that you don't find in other organizations. Right. Um and so sometimes you need to look at different sizes yeah. of organizations to find something that fits for you. Okay, right. Let's move on. So you say that you say on your profile, and I love this because it it really shines a light on your team, and that is what this is all about. You say that you're a part of an award winning service desk team. So talk about that. What's yeah. the what's it like yeah. working for them? What's it so like? Unisys, the service desk, we're a global operation, right? We have centers all across the world. And when I came into Unisys, you know, I had no idea what HDI was. You know, part of the interview process is I was kind of exploring this organization and kind of what they were about. Uh, I interviewed who with who is now my boss and my previous boss um, and, you know, his counterparts across the globe, as well as who would be my counterpart and and what they asked me to do, which was, I think was such a good exercise for interviewing. I said, Hey, come and we want you to present to us whatever you see fit. Right. And however you want to do it, what is a world-class service desk? And as a part of this, I, I got to talk a lot about my passion for investing in our people for proactive and predictive solutions and, you know, giving the voice to the service desk. And, you know, we live a lot of that out and we're constantly evolving a lot of that. And, Part of the world class service desk and being an award winning service desk is, you know, I didn't know what HCI was. I didn't know what ECC was, the European Contact Center Solutions. I didn't know what, you know, I knew what SDI was. That was a part of my presentation. I was like, I want to be, you know, award winning. I want to win SDI awards. I want to be SDI certified. And it turns out there's actually something more central to the United States where I was at least. I was called HDI. Um, and and so the, the process, right, is we went through a certification program, which is the first time I heard of HDI is they look at all of the practices we do as a service desk. And they say, are you doing what is the most relevant and new and, you know, doing the things that a world-class service desk should do, a support organization should do. And and it was a great experience. You know, you, you learn a lot about what an industry like HA looks for as world-class. And so we actually got certified at 3.5 out of 4, which was awesome for our first, first go at it. A lot of prep time went into that. And consequently, followed up, we got to submit for awards, right, for HDI. And um, last year, we I think we were finalists some like five awards, and we had best HDI uh, award for the analyst of the year and for team manager of the year. Uh, we also won some SDI awards, and we won some AECC awards. You know, some I think some silver and maybe one gold. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not as close to the ECC awards. Uh, and so we're constantly trying to, you know, up our game and just really put forth forward what the accomplishments we have and what we're doing, you know, as an organization and our people. And that's what I love about HDI Awards is you have the ability to say, what are the stories worth telling? And it's not just your customers, it's your people, right? It's your it's your agents who are delivering that service. And and this year I had the, you know, I've had the opportunity to help write up all of our nominations. 
And it's so much fun getting to hear the stories, right? That other people are telling about managers and associates who are supporting your end users, right? And so this year we were finals and eight awards and knock on wood come May, our hope is we take home a good portion of those. You know, I know there's just a strong competition. Those of you who are in the HCI community listening to this, I, no, no ill, no foul, but I hope we beat you. <laughs> uh, you know, and I think for me and goal is I want to see us take home the culture. You know, I know we talked about that last time we, we talked and I think that paints a picture of who we are and what we're doing for our people. And, you know, ultimately what we're doing for our customer experience through our associate and employee experience. Uh, and, and the one award I think I'm most proud of this year is one for innovation around some things we did for a health organization to save them time and efficiency, because long story short, I think that specific industry, the, more efficient you are, the quicker you resolve things, the the more proactive you are, which is ultimately what this story is for the nomination on that one, is you're saving lives. Like, and there's no way, no exaggeration around that. So uh, when I say Unisys, an award-winning organization, that's what I mean, right? We're doing a lot of the things that I think a lot of organizations love to do. And it's been really fun to be a part of and help write those stories and, and look forward to 2024 and write more. So... Yeah. Awesome. Good points, man. You know, you, you see those awards at HDI events and, and I, listening to you is just a reminder. If you hear about those awards, you hear those teams getting those awards or those individuals getting awards, you know, reach out to hear the story behind the story. You know, what right. was that like? What, what, what was it like being certified? What was it like writing those nominations? It really is good to stop and reflect and tell stories That's and listen to stories, isn't it? Well, so I heard this, uh, I saw this saying, I don't know, somebody in the HI community, I think posted it, that data and being able to take data and storytelling is combine those is the best superpower you can find in the IT and technology industry today. So true. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Make it mean something, make it mean something. And the other thing that I really like is that you, um, just telling your story and of course, seeing Unisys on the stage, it it continues to sort of beat down this this terrible uh, stereotype that we get for outsourcing vendors or, or service right. vendors or MSPs or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's really, I think it's really good to kind of yes. show that number one, there's a ton of opportunities in the MSP space. There's tons of opportunities, not only because there's a lot of openings, but also because you know you are pollinating a different flower every month or every quarter or every year. You get a ton more experience. Right. And then they do have a lot of investment in the talent, in the people. They've got training programs built up. They, it, it's meant to kind of be a career right. development, you know, silo. Um, right. So talk about that a little bit. What's it like yeah. working for a managed service provider? What's it like working for an outsourcer? What do you like about it? What do you dislike about it? So I, what I love about specifically Unisys and MSP is not only do we have. Uh, we're a mid-sized company, right? Some of our competitors are 200,000 people, yeah. 150,000 people, 400,000 people. We're probably 20 to 30,000 globally. Oh, and man. so the MSP world, it, it, there can be so many layers to see change, to uh-huh. see really things that are going to impact the wider audience of an organization. What I've loved about being a part of Unisys and the MSP environment is, you know, I think I'm four layers to the CEO. Right to Peter Altabeff, who is, you know, and he's on record saying years ago, we're transforming from a service industry to an experience industry, you know, to an organization that's focused on experience. And to the point where, you know, we've rebranded this year and we're and the cool thing about the rebranding is it's not even um, changing who we are. It's just telling our story around what we actually do. Right, Unisys is known for workplace services. That's what we do. Everybody knows Unisys has always been a player in that game, build service engineer. But really, we're doing so much more. It's about making sure that we're helping people understand how we're in partnering with every kind of industry you can imagine: public, transportation, real estate, you know, or retail. You know, every industry to help them experience technology breakthrough. Right, and making their employee experience better and looking at how we can help them become proactive, predictive in their employee digital experience, which ultimately, you know, translates for them to better customer experience on their end, right? And so 
you know, that aspect is really exciting to me is being a part of an organization, MSP or otherwise, that is really focused on that, is walking the walk, putting things in place. Even, you know, my role didn't really exist two years ago, right, in the service desk. You know, coming into a new role of experience manager where I get to focus in on how do we ensure that agent population understands what we're doing as an organization, understands the tools we're using, how it's going to impact their the way they work, right? Because we're getting away from the the days of interactive is the most important thing, that right? Has. We're becoming an industry as a whole where if you're not looking at holistic experience for your customers, you're you're going to be behind the eight ball when it comes to competition, those kind of things. And so I get to look at that piece, the tools, right? The digital experience management. I get to look at, you know, our contact center and the cool things that, that we can do with that and ask the questions, how does this impact how the agent works in their experience? And then also ask the question, how do we help the agents add value in different ways, right? So one of the biggest things I'll be advocate forever until the day that I die is nobody knows your customer or your employees better than your service desk. Yeah. Nobody, right? Because if you're not asking your service desk for their opinion, their voice about what they're seeing, data tells you one thing, but there's a sentiment piece that goes with that, right? And so what does that piece have? So I get to play a huge part in that and, and really get to see all sorts of different customers and impact and translate that to your point to stories, right? To help our agent population understand, hey, when you're supporting you know, this financial industry, you're actually helping a widowed you know, wife who just lost her husband figure out how to refinance her mortgage if she can't afford her social security. Uh -huh. I, I get to help the agents process the the difference you're making every day, right? And so that's what I love about my job. And I love that we have so many different places we're impacting and making a real difference for our customers. And, and you know, there's clear opportunity to grow for people if they want it. You know, everybody wants to take a leap to be a service delivery manager or to be, you know, in management or people management. Some people want to be in DevOps. I want to code and I want to be in security. And we've seen that, right? In the last... Last time we did a monthly review with all of our service desks, we got to tell stories about people who jumped around to our knowledge function service organization, which is looking at training and doing quality and and knowledge management, right? And helping set the bar for knowledge and service transformation in our organization and see people move to security. So just all sorts of opportunity for growth on our people. So I could talk about, you know, the great things about Unisys and the people that we work with and the opportunities there all day. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I really enjoyed about this, not only has it changed my life personally as somebody who didn't have IT background, but I see it with the ability and to impact you know a wider, wider, wider audience um, as a whole. So that, that's what I've I've loved about it. And we talk talk when it comes to experience. Yes, that's what it's all about: building a great experience and and keeping that niche. You know, really focusing on help desk. And, um, you know, workplace services, it's, a, it's such a good point that each MSP kind of has their own take, their own angle, right. their own thing that, you know, makes them them, whether it's their size or their skills or their people or their culture. Um, I also really like that you pointed out that you learned a lot of this at Chick-fil-A at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, I did. I, I yeah. had the same thing, you know, like I learned yeah. the power of doing dishes in front of your staff and what that means to them when you're the, yeah. the manager of a subway, which is what yeah. I was doing. Kind of the same deal. So what keeps you excited about service and support? What keeps you coming back to work? What keeps you in this industry, Rocky? For me, it's a combination of things. One, I want to find purpose in my work. And right? Was... And, and even more than that, I want the people around me to understand the purpose that they have and the value they bring. There was and a... I get that opportunity every day. Right. I get the opportunity to look at ways we can help improve that and, and enhance the experience of our associates and our, our services agents who, you know, in an organization of our size can feel like there's a small blip, but makes such a big impact. And, it, you know, for me, I'm not, I'm not a techie. I'm not a techie at all. Right. I, like you said, my background in Chick-fil-A and people management, and, and I'm all about figuring out how to make people the most successful we can, give them the knowledge to be successful. And so, for me, what keeps me coming back, other than the fact that I have a beautiful 16-month-old or 14-month-old and one on the way, another baby girl on the way, is um, I love what I do 
you know, I have purpose in what I do. I got back from vacation last week after being in Malibu, Asheville, and I even posted on LinkedIn, uh, you know, I look forward to being back. Not that I don't enjoy my time away, but because I think I understand the purpose of what I do every day, mm. right? And it's ultimately to help our people make a bigger impact in the lives of the people that they're serving. So. And can you as a service desk agent do that for your teams? What a, what a great call to action, a great challenge, you know? That's, yeah. what it's, that's what it's about is showing up for them and showing up for you so that you can show up for them. <laughs> right, right. And, and you're right. It is. It's that service leadership. It's that it's that um, the call to serve. It really is what, yeah. what keeps me coming back to this industry. Um, and where do you see this industry going? Like, where do you see this industry moving? Do you, is there stuff on the horizon that's really got your attention? Um, yeah. And where do you see your career going? Yeah, my career. I'll start there. Is for me, it's a a day at a time, right? I have yeah. a purpose right now. And, and ultimately, even when I started in this industry, I kind of had goals. Like, and my goal has always been, I want to make a bigger impact to the people that are around me. That's it. It's yeah. that simple. How can I influence and impact people in a, a bigger way? Um, from a industry standpoint, I think what like I mentioned before, what we're going to be seeing is more, le- more focus on experience and holistic experience of the employee and now be an MSP, right? We have all sorts of different customers and looking at them individually and looking at the industries as a whole and knowing what are the trends and knowing what are the trends coming, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and being able to make sure that the service desk, the support world, support world, <laughs> a shameless plug for support world life, right? Uh, but the support world, right, that our agents and, and the people supporting the employees that interact with us understand the tools we're using and the tools allow them to do their job more efficiently, better to focus on the things that really matter to the person on the other end of the interaction. So outside of predictive, you know, solutions where you get like digital experience management tools, and those are going to become the norm. Uh, That's not going to be something that's optional down the road. Very, very shortly is you're going to have to know what's going on with all the applications and why something hung up and what was open, right? All all those things are going to be a reality. But for me, what I see is, Agents transforming from interactive focus to experience and to knowledge driving so that you can prevent an issue before it ever comes, right? You can have those level zero articles. Um, so there's a lot of cool automation and things like that, chat GPT, you know, that kind of technology that I think we'll see more and more of. And I'm really intrigued by that. But I think ultimately it's going to be about proactive experience and predictive experience, you know, continue to grow. Wow. Just imagine the days when incident management isn't about you know, that quick time to resolution where resolution isn't the number one objective. Yeah. The experience is the number one objective. Right. And the interaction piece, right? It matters. You're never going to have SLAs go away. Now, some right. companies don't have internal SLAs. Some do. We always do, right? Because we have contractual obligations. SLAs will never go away because they they give you some detail, right? To tell a story. But it's only a piece of the story. The watermelon effect is very real, right? Where everything's green. And then you bust open the watermelon or the water cooler and it's like, IT is so frustrating. Like, yeah. oh, I can't stand this application. Even though I have that calling and support, what's the sentiment around? What's the experience around that? So absolutely, you're spot on, I think, Matt. I was just thinking about how you said, you know, give, giving giving them the tools to to manipulate the experience or to change the experience in the moment. Sometimes our priorities might shift and that it's kind of a mind blow because so so we have spent decades now focusing yeah. it's, it's resolution. It's all about yeah. resolution, time to value, right. time to resolution. So right. kind of an interesting, it'll be interesting to see how much that changes. Rocky, how can people connect with you and learn more? Yeah, so you can check me out on LinkedIn. I actually just turned on Creator Mode after a long time of debating. I'm like, you know, I share a lot of things, specifically Unisys and generally, and I, I'm a leadership junkie, like you said. I love leadership. Um, I'm really a Simon Sinek, like he's one of the guys I absorb a lot. Um, so I like to share things that hopefully bring value. And then if you're coming to support world live, I'm actually hosting a breakout on servant leadership. And so come check me out, come hang out with me. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to, it's, it's really a big step for me to actually put myself out there in front of people like that. And, uh, we're talking about servant leadership in my breakout on Thursday. I think it's 11 15. That's one of those sessions. And so if you want to come, you know, meet me, I'd love to just meet faces, meet people, talk about, uh, you know, how you're impacting your industry and your environment, what you see coming. 
and we're going to be talking about servant leadership, talking about what that actually looks like and how we can use servant leadership and invest in our people in a way that helps them feel like they're thriving every day. So, well, we hope to see you there. Thanks for joining us on Ticket Volley, Rocky. Thanks for having me, Matt. I appreciate it. And for our audience, thanks for listening to this episode. We've got a bunch more out there and even more coming, including a live uh, event on April 14th. Please sign up to join us at ticketvolume.invigate.com or invigate.com slash ticketvolume or ticketvolume.com. You can submit a specific topic or guest by DMing me or leaving a comment on our LinkedIn page. And speaking of that, if you like today's podcast, want to share feedback, please leave us a review. You know that the algorithm rewards us for your interactions. This podcast is brought to you by Invigate, the all-in-one IT service and asset management system that helps organizations and teams with world-class IT support. If you're looking for a solution that has less headaches, lower total cost of ownership, faster time to implementation, you're going to love Invigate. In fact, teams from NASA, Toyota, McDonald's, and many more use Invigate to manage requests, automate workflow, and centralize inventory data so that they can focus on delivering better service. Because good service is good business. We'll